I know based on my other lectures, you're probably thinking to yourself, this lecture is going really fast and we're not really covering a lot of material. And that's, that's for a good reason. I would like you to practice, practice, practice the pen tool over and over again. And so we are basically wrapped up. I just have a few more slides on the use of the pen tool. It is an introduction. I'm not expecting you to be a master of the pen tool, but you should clearly know the difference between the anchor point and directional line. You should know that vector art is fully scalable and things like that. Um, we're going to add a couple new things right now that will help you just be a better pen user uh, moving forward, but your time this week should be sent, spent on practicing, practicing, and practicing the pen tool. So the next thing I want to talk about is when you're using the pen tool or really any vector art creation uh, process, it's important to close your paths unless you're choosing not to close your paths. And when you're just creating outlines or shapes, you might think to yourself, well, it looks okay and it's fine, but when you go to fill it with a color, that's when weird stuff happens. And so my first example here, I just quickly kind of made a geometric shape. I click, 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 clicked all the way around, but you can see that in the top left-hand corner, I did not connect the last anchor point I made to the first anchor point. And right now it's fine because I've just filled it with purple. But if I put like a bright pink border around the whole outside, the border would only go where you're seeing the outline. It would not connect between the last anchor point I created and the first anchor point. And so if you don't close your shape, then you can't really put a stroke around it the way that you would want to. The second example I have is I'm trying to make the letter S. And so I've kind of like clicked around and I've modified my anchor points and I think it looks like an S and I think it's really great. But depending on where my last anchor point is left, I could end up with something that maybe looks like an S on the left here or something that looks really funky like the thing on the right. When you fill a, an open path with a color, um, a line will be drawn basically between the last anchor point you've created and the first anchor point. And so in the first uh, example here, it almost looks natural. It looks like it's been filled in and I wanted to have that triangle kind of area cut out of the end of the ribbon or whatever I've created. Um, but in this example here, if I just stop, if I, I'm going all the way around, I'm clicking, 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 clicking all the way around to make my shape. I get all the way around and I just stop here because it was like, well, you know, that looks pretty good. It looks like an S. Uh, I'm looking at the outline. It looks like the letter S. But when I filled it in, I got this weird pattern because I didn't go all the way back around to the beginning. In the second example, or I guess it's the first example for the second image here, um, you can see it looks more like an S, but it still has a straight line. And so in the second example, I started up here on the top left-hand corner. I click, 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 clicked all the way through, all the way around. And then when I got over here, I said, well, I've gotten further than the first one, and so now I'm clear of this little bump out. I should be good. But I let go, and I just let it fill in. But when I did that, I got a straight line. And so if I was creating a curved shape, I'd want to make sure it's curved as well. You know that you're closing a path if you get back to the original anchor point, and when you hover your cursor over the first anchor point, you should get a little circle that appears next to the cursor. That's the close anchor point sign. Now if you, for some reason, forget to close a path or you close a path and then you want to open a path, you can do that via the object menu in InDesign. Okay, So let's jump back to InDesign here. And so let's say that I'm trying to create this letter R, but instead of creating it like I already did, I'm going to grab a pen tool. And now I'm going to just kind of click and make a letter R. Should probably not have used an R because. Okay. If I go all the way back to the beginning and I create my R, um, I will have what looks like what you see here, right? I've gone all the way back, I've gone to the beginning. Let's do S. I think S is easier to do for this example. And so let's do that again. Let's try to make an S. I'm going to try to make a curvy S using anchor points. I'm not going to worry about it actually being curvy. But I'm going to start, let's say, over here, and I'm going to come across and make my S. And I could say that's done, it looks like an S. But I didn't go all the way back to the beginning, so I have what's considered an open path. And so if I give it a fill color right now, um, the fill will fill in the, the inside interior area of the shape. And if I haven't closed my path, InDesign will basically close it for me by connecting the last anchor point I made to the first anchor point. And so now it looks more like an 8 and not less like an S. 
but it looks even more weird if I increase the stroke because now I can see that I haven't connected or closed my path. That actually doesn't look too bad if I was creating some sort of funky logo that has an S with a weird background. And so there's going to be a time and place for an open path or a closed path. If I was trying to create some sort of funky background, maybe I'm trying to make like a, just a weird kind of shape for the background of something for whatever reason. If I close the path and I give it a color, I'm guaranteed that everywhere that I have selected is going to be filled with that color. You can change the color of the background. Oh, that's a bad color to choose. You can change the color of the background. You can increase the weight and the stroke goes all the way around the outside of the shape. But, let's delete that. If I do the same thing and I'm trying to create maybe like a funky looking star, And I get about here and I think, well, that looks good. It's done. Um, I haven't closed the path. And so if I was going to give it a fill color, it might still look okay with a fill color. Well, that's not a fill color, so make sure you give it fill color. It might still look okay with a fill color, and you can't really tell, especially if I get rid of the stroke, right? But if I decided to add a stroke on the outside of this and I wanted a big, I don't know, orange border around the whole thing, the bigger I make the stroke, the more obvious it will be that I haven't closed my path. Now, it's not the end of the world if you didn't close your path, because InDesign can help you. It wants to connect the very last anchor point to the very first anchor point. And so if you select your path and go to the object menu and choose paths, you'll see that there's some options to join, to open, to close, and to reverse your path. And so you can close your path and it will connect the very last anchor point that you created to the very first one and in this case it worked out pretty well now if I did something like in the other example or I just kinda of stopped over here for whatever reason and then I selected the object and chose object paths and close path it will draw a line from the last anchor point to the first anchor point and that might not be what I was looking for Earlier in the lecture, I said it's a bad idea to use the line tool to try to create shapes like a triangle. Right? It's a bad idea. Because now if I try to select these and I try to give them a fill color, I cannot give a fill color to a line because there's no interior part of it. But if you grab your white mouse and you zoom in on the corner or the junction, you can see that there's two anchor points here. There's one for each. If you place them over top or close to each other, and then you select them both. So I have to draw a little selection mark here around them. And I have both anchor points selected. If you go to the object menu paths, instead of choosing close, you can choose join. I'm going to zoom in. I can't zoom in, can I? Let me see if I can zoom in. Yeah, I'll be able to zoom in. And so I still have those two anchor points selected. If I choose object paths and then join, it will take two anchor points and it will make them one. And so now you have a junction. And if we zoom out here, if I give that a fill color, it will fill in the color. Now, it has not been connected to the other point, so it's an open path. And so if I'm trying to make a triangle, I could just repeat that process. I could move, I could move this guy into place, and I could join the top corner, and then I could join the bottom corner. But we just learned that if you have an open path and you select it with your black mouse and choose object paths, you can choose to close the path and then InDesign will automatically, let me zoom in, so object paths and close, it will automatically connect the two open points of the triangle and it will make the triangle for you. Not to go on too much of a tangent though, that's a hard way to make a triangle and so a lot of students don't know how to make triangles because it's not only options that you're going to make if you choose your shape tool, your rectangle, your ellipse, or your polygon. There are two easier ways to make a triangle. The first is to use the rectangle tool and make a rectangle and then delete one of the corners. And so if you select your white mouse and you click the top right hand anchor point and hit delete, it becomes, let me fill this in, it becomes a triangle. However, notice if you use the delete key to delete an anchor point, you're actually deleting the path and the line. And so a better option instead of, let's give us a fill color, instead of deleting the anchor point with the delete tool, if you switch um, on your pen tool options, if you select the delete anchor point tool and then you click an anchor point, 
it will delete it, but it will keep your path closed. And so you don't have to worry about opening and closing your paths if you use the proper add anchor point and delete anchor point tools. You can use the add anchor point tool very similarly. The only challenge with this is you have to make sure you're on a path when you use this. And so if you select the add anchor point tool and you zoom in on a path, you can click the path and it will add an anchor point. And so you can add a couple anchor points. Uh, one thing that students will ask me a lot is, well, how do I put like a hole in the middle? Maybe I want to have the black line come down halfway, and then I want a gap, and then I want a black line. Well, if you were paying attention to what I just did, I added three anchor points. And so if you select an anchor point and use the delete key to delete it, it opens your path. And so I could use that to create an open path in the middle. And then now you could use your white mouse, and you could figure out where you want that, that line to go if you wanted to open it. The second way to make a triangle, which I think is actually the easiest way to make the triangle, I guess this would be the third because the first would be that really long, complicated way, um, is to use the polygon tool. So instead of using a rectangle and then having to modify the rectangle to be a triangle, you can use the polygon tool. And if you click, instead of making an eight-sided star, I can make a three-sided, zero percent star inset shape. And now it's a triangle. It's got a closed path. You can give it a fill color, and then you can modify the anchor points so that it's the triangle that you want it to be. Maybe you want it to be short and squatty like that, and you can make some modifications that way.